Good evening. A mother from Hampshire whose daughter took her own life after being labelled a time waster has won her legal battle for compensation against the Health Trust, which failed her. Hannah Groves, who was 20, was told she was not at risk despite pleading to be admitted to the mental health unit. Four and a half years on, her mother has been awarded £260,000 in compensation from Southern Health for the trauma she suffered in finding her daughter's body. Rachel Hapworth has the story. A Valentine's Day without Mandy Park's beloved daughter and the words they shared with each other every day. Hannah Groves was a bright and happy girl studying French at university with no history of mental illness. But in just 10 days, she went from suffering a panic attack to psychosis. Despite suicide attempts and police intervention, her cries for help were ignored. I really believe if they, you know, the mental health team had taken the time, even if they hadn't listened to me, you know, listened to other professionals, I really believe my daughter would still be alive. Three hours after being sent home, Hannah strangled herself, her body found by her distraught mother. This was an appalling case of wholesale failings repeatedly by different practitioners on a day-by-day -day basis over that 10-day period when both Mandy and Hannah were frantic to get help. There's no amount of compensation that can even begin to be a gesture towards truly making good if someone turned up at you know, A&E with their leg hanging off, bleeding, there's no way anyone would come out and say, I'll go away and we'll call you back in three hours. It just wouldn't happen, you know, and just because you can't see mental illness and there's a huge stigma still attached, it needs to be changed. People need to see it differently. She's calling for greater sensitivity and cooperation between agencies and better resourcing for mental health services. Southern Health say they are working hard to learn the lessons of the past and have apologised for letting Hannah down. In a statement, they said the use of inappropriate language by a clinician in this case was not acceptable. The member of staff in question was not employed by Southern Health and the matter was dealt with by their employer at the time. Mandy now wants to turn her energies into educating children and young adults about the signs of mental illness, a legacy for Hannah. I need to keep my daughter's spirit alive. There's no justice, there's no closure, but I need to somehow keep her name alive. Rachel Hepworth, ITV News in Southampton. And if you've been affected by anything in that report, you can contact the Samaritans free on the number 116123. That's 116123. In other news tonight, a man has been charged in connection with the death of two young runners who were killed after being hit by a car in Aldershot. 16-year-old Stacey Burrows and Lucy Piggott, who was 17, died in November. Michael Casey, who's 24 and from Tottenham, has been charged with two counts of causing death by dangerous driving. He's been released on bail and is due back in court next month. Two people have been bailed after a man was shot in the head in Waterlooville. He's in a critical condition in hospital. A third person, a 31-year-old woman, remains in police custody on suspicion of conspiring to murder. The shooting happened in the early hours of Monday morning. The Brighton and Hove Albion footballer Rowan Ince has told a court he didn't hit a nightclub bouncer with a bottle on Christmas Day. The assault allegedly took place outside the Attic nightclub in Windsor. Ince denies the charges and the case continues at Reading Crown Court. Now, talks have collapsed between the RMT Union and Southern Rail this evening. The two sides have been locked in talks in London today in a row over staffing changes. But after three hours, the two sides couldn't agree. Southern have said they're disappointed talks have broken down and the RMT say more strikes are now likely. We're very disappointed that the colleagues from the RMT have left. We had an open and constructive uh, set of discussions. We clarified our position to them. They asked us uh, for further clarification, which we gave them, um, but they felt that uh, this didn't meet their aspirations, so uh, they departed the talks today. Over 20,000 trains have been cancelled since this dispute started. We've reached a good agreement with colleagues in ASLEF and today we'd hope to be able to do the same uh, with colleagues from the RMT. But they've chosen to leave the talks today to consider their position in the light of the views that we exchanged. Uh, more industrial action is possible. Uh, we did ask the company to give us a guarantee of a second safety critical person on the train. They refused to do so. 
um, citing the, the deal they've done with uh, ASLE for Train Drivers Union. Um, and um, we're hopeful that they will rethink that position. And if, that, if they do that, then it allows us to get around the table and see if we can come up with solution, a solution to this uh, dispute. A man has died after collapsing on Brighton seafront. Emergency services treated the 39-year-old on Kings Road before taking him to the Royal Sussex County Hospital where he died. His death is being treated as unexplained but not suspicious. Sussex police say they won't tolerate their staff being assaulted. There have been over 3,000 incidents since 2013, including this one in Brighton, captured on a body cam. The force says officers will now make an official report if they're assaulted, and it's not being treated as part of the job. Police are searching for these two men following a robbery in Hove. It happened at Solutions Inc. on Old Shoreham Road. They got away with three computers worth around £3,000. It's believed one of the suspects was carrying either a knife or a screwdriver. Now, more and more children are being diagnosed with autism. 30 years ago, it was rare, affecting around 1 in 500. But now that figure stands at 1 in every 100 children. But now parents and sufferers are receiving help from an unlikely source, as Andy Dickinson explains. For most of us, supermarket shopping can be a weekly, even a daily chore. But for adults and children with autism, it can be a nightmare. A bombardment of sights and sounds that's all too much. It's hard because of the noise, the amount of people, the lights. Everything is just quite challenging. He'll run off, climb all over everything. I get upset and stressed and start kicking off. It's the noise and the feelings of everything going on. Yet this particular store is trying to make a difference. It started offering a quiet hour just once a week in which that battle of the senses is turned down. Lights are dimmed, music is switched off, maps are handed out and a special checkout opened. We really want to uh, do anything within the community where we can. That's part of the job that we do. Uh, and this is a prime example of, of, of just small changes that make a big difference. While the benefits may be obvious, people coping with autism say they also feel less judged in an environment where they once felt shunned. I just don't feel like I'm being stared at or spoken about, so it's kind of helpful. It makes it uh, easier for us as parents as well as for him uh, to be able to walk with us, pick up products from the shelves, which is, uh, you know, we never thought we would be able to do. We've had thousands of families across the UK contact us to say, can we have this in our store because this is what we need. We've been crying out for it for years and to see it actually come to life and actually not be that much of a strain to Tesco's but make a huge difference to the families is a, is a phenomenal success, I think. 75.